tonight. From TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville, Florida, it's a special five-time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. C.J. Beathard and the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Mitchell Trubisky and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Looks like it's going to be a pretty soggy night here at TIAA Bank Field. Rain showers, maybe an occasional clap of thunder supposed to continue throughout here in Jacksonville. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. started now the kicker Chris Boswell and off we go from Jacksonville Jamal Agnew now to return it and they'll start this drive just across the 30 pretty nice work on the return so here's the first drive now for the Jags they'll be led out by a man who played his college ball for the Iowa Hawkeyes six foot two quarterback C.J. Beathard pretty good bloodlines for him the grandson of Hall of Fame scout and general manager Bobby Beathard he stepped into a temporary starting role on multiple occasions in the NFL. And while the wins didn't always come, the potential was there. Knows how to move a team, knows how to lead a team, and can make plays when called upon. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. To throw is Beathard. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. They'll throw here, Beathard. That is incomplete. He was looking for Evan Ingram, the tight end. And that'll bring up second down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. First carry for the Clemson man, Travis Etienne. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. For the heavy set out there, three tight ends in the formation for third and three. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. And some good running out of the gates as he takes this up to the 33. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Throw is Beathard. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to find his tight end, Dan Arnold. And that'll bring up second down. 
That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Bathard. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Now Bathard. He'll drop that underneath to ETM. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. A field goal try coming up here for the Jags. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And his kick is indeed good. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. It'll continue to be interesting in these wet conditions how these kickers fare, but first test, passed. And how about how the special teams unit handled that? A lot of concentration to make sure the ball didn't slip through his fingers. After the snap, got it down and let it pop it through the posts. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taken in at the three. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by the number two overall pick in 2016 from North Carolina, Mitchell Trubisky. Well, he certainly had his ups and downs since being the second overall selection back in 2017. But when he's on, Mitchell Trubisky shows all the attributes you're looking for in a quarterback. Big arm, excellent legs for mobility. His key, being consistent. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now, first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Malcolm Brown. What a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. It may be cliche, but it is something that holds up over time, doesn't it? If you're the visitors, you don't want to let the crowd in the game early. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did there. But you said also this defense, they're going to give them a lot of looks like we just saw there, aren't they? They certainly are. They're a proud unit, and they're going to ride the momentum of this crowd with them, and that's why they got after them early. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating? The guys who just gave up that play. On second down, it's Harris. And despite a little power on the move, still tackled shy of the 20. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 23. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. Well, certainly not how he wanted to start his 
night. First throw of the game at INT. Yeah, it's not easy, but he's got to try to wipe that away from the memory banks. And let's face it, it's not often a quarterback and a defensive back have a lot in common. But one thing, because they have these individual type plays, they've got to have short memories, don't they? DB gets beat, wipe it away, quarterback throws a pick, has to do the same thing. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. They run, Robinson. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gate of three. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Draw play, ETN. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Some good, strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. They'll let the tight end Ingram run with it. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. A lot can go wrong when you call a play like this down in the red zone, but that's where you appreciate this from your head coach. He's not afraid to trust his guys to do the right thing. And as a player, that means an awful lot. From the two now, second and goal. They'll try and run. This is Robinson. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. James Robinson taking it in from two yards out. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. A drive there of just four plays, and it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. So an early 10-0 lead for him now as they kick it away. Take it in at the three. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. This is Harris on the draw. He takes us from the 30 to the 34. 
10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. with five in the secondary now on third down. Rudolph. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. When an offense reads a blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Rudolph on first down. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Now whistles here before the snap, but it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. So that'll back him up five. Play fake, and it's Rudolph. Here's Johnson with a reception. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, Rudolph. And it's caught. And the Steelers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Harris. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Defensively, we always know that he is tough and run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. Right now, no questioning the toughness of this Jaguar defense. This is third and goal. They'll try and run with Harris. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Najee Harris 
Excellent work there to get in on the touchdown run. And the Steelers are able to make this a close game again. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. To return, here's Agnew. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes you get all those big guys down there in one spot, and there's just nowhere to go. And in this case, the defensive tackle used his strength and swallowed him up. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Back to throw Bethard. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. The Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Here's Beathard to throw. That's caught. It's Dan Arnold, the tight end. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Two minutes remaining in the first half, 10-7, our score. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. Three yards the game there, second down. Bathard to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hands, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass throwing a little bit behind you. That one was. All the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. 
They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. He finds Robinson. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. Back to throw again. And that's complete ETN out of the backfield. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time, separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to throw. Forced out to his left, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. They'll set up to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. And his kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half, and they'll have a little bit of time to work with, 35 seconds until the break. seconds all that remains in the first half as they come up on first down 50, 50. Rudolph looking to throw and the Jags get to him as down he goes Caleb on chase up gets him for a loss of 10 yards from his linebacker spot but when you see a quarterback retreating away from the line of scrimmage toward the other goal line like that usually doesn't end well you're exactly right about that. Normally, if they're moving from side to side, they've got a chance maybe to get back upfield. He was trying to shake defenders and extend the play, but it doesn't work out very well for them at all. You need those extra yards on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Now you're digging a hole for your offense. A final shot before the break, Rudolph. 
And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we hit the halftime break here in Jacksonville with the Jags on top as we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon God. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. continue as we are underway in the second half. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And the Steeler offense ready to get going here in this third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 right at the 30. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. The Steelers send out their punter now, and surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Yard punt there with no return, and the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Second down at five. They'll look to throw here. 
Open man right side is Ingram. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Looking to throw. Finds the open target, Arnold. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him down. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. They'll run it now with Robinson, and he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Here's second and nine. Hey, four one Mike, four one Mike. They'll look to throw. That's out wide here for Robinson. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Two yards on the pickup there. And that'll lead here to a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And they're gonna have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 27-yard line. That's a play that'll likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And points result, we'll call this play significant. First down, it's Robinson. And not able to break away this time as they're gonna stop him right around the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Here's a give to ETN. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. On third down, he'll drop to throw. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. 
And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to, and he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. The sack by T.J. Watt, or as his mother Connie calls him, Trent Jordan Watt. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. On the run, it's Robinson. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. The Jaguars on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is going to be third and 13. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And his kick is good. And now it's a two-score game at nine, 16 to seven. So that's CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. He seemed to have a reasonable amount of time in the pocket, but he couldn't get rid of the football and the end result, Charles, him on the ground. Yeah, he's got to keep an internal clock to go along with his offensive line. When you're talking about three, four, five seconds, that's a reasonable amount of time to expect to deliver the ball downfield. So great to try and complete a pass, but it's equally important to know when to throw the football away, too. Throwing on second and long, Rudolph. 
And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. And the Steelers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and forever. Now it's Rudolph. Dwayne Smoot drops him for a loss of 12, and it also brings up fourth down. My oh man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Here we go on fourth. Rudolph. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. The Steelers try it, but they come up empty on fourth down. And it'll be a turnover on downs. So still over three minutes remaining in this game, but boy, not getting that when that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing, so they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. So now, just like that, things change dramatically. It's first and goal. Look at this, a tight end carry. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Evan Ingram, fine work there on the touchdown run. And the Jaguars are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, this, of course, set up by the stop a moment ago on fourth down, and now that might be the score that puts this one officially out of reach. And it's a tough one because your hands are tied when you're losing in the fourth quarter because you know you've got to make something happen. They couldn't pick up the first down, and after that, the air just went right out of the balloon, and you knew you were looking at a defeated team. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. They'll look to throw. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. And the formula there on the two-point try to go five wide, not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there. For the defense, what you're trying to do is make sure that someone, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it behind you because they run ahead of space with the back line. But in this case, the offense figured it out. To the touchdown cook now to kick this one away this will be fielded inside the five and able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line pittsburgh set to take over again on offense and last time this unit was out here costly turnover and then that turned into six points they've got to make amends and how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. He finds his man, Johnson. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? To throw again on second down, Rudolph. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of 
pressure he's been under this entire game. Fires quickly to White. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. down it's Rudolph nowhere to go here he lost the football and did the Jaguars come up with it they did all right you've had to put up with me in this booth I'm gonna try and be simple this time and succinct it simply has not been their night no I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone isn't it without a doubt I mean they've, they've tried <laughs> but nothing has ever really taken throughout the game that's why they're down so big First down, Robinson, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm, but when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Here's Robinson again on second down. And he'll take this forward for about five as we have come upon the two-minute warning. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. But he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. 55 rushing yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And strong running there as he's inside the ten and down to the eight-yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. On second down now, it's Robinson, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It's a six-yard run, leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. 
Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gawden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.